the ones that are leading the business in this right now, and we've seen executions across the entire country, but it's when you walk in the store and the first thing you see, it's not a cold barrel of, of traditional items that you would see or side stacks. It is fresh sandwiches, drinks, yogurt, super premium items right in the traffic pattern. As soon as they walk in, all grouped together, merchandise in a way that says it's a better for you option, on the go, lunch, breakfast, snack, whatever it is, that is the best execution. It's a huge investment for stores to make. Um, there's labor, there's the equipment, you're taking space away from proven items, but this is where the trend is going, and that's something that we think we can offer as an item that's proven a connection with male consumers that are going in, looking for hydration and healthy options, and looking for a quick snack, something to complement their lunch. It's a perfect way to go see this. And those are the ones that have been really successful. And hopefully we see that trend continue as it goes across the country. Some of it is uh, related because it's not in the cooler set. They're using space that was either ambient space before, they're putting their own proprietary refrigeration up and selling things like drinkable yogurts and fresh fruit and things that need refrigeration and then they're incorporating beverages into those grab-and-go impulse areas. Everything's sold in a cold vault in a C-store, so I don't know if it's really being merchandised any differently or I guess it's more about the distribution and how it's getting there because of these, these perishable brands that aren't shelf-stable needing to get on their uh, a Kahi or a UNFI truck to get there. Um, some of the beer guys, <clears throat> some of the soda guys we're seeing put some refrigerated insulated boxes in their beverage uh, doors on their beverage trucks. I don't know, you know, that, there, there's a lot of people that are testing that. I haven't, it's not widespread, it's kind of expensive. But I think we're going to start seeing more and more, you know, perishable beverages show up in this channel. Yeah, I think that's a bit of an adventure for them right now. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's, uh, you, they look across the categories and they see some of their categories shrinking, like CSDs, uh, juice has been shrinking, uh, you see milk that's been shrinking. I think, I think that to a certain extent it's been a little bit of a, of a land grab meaning that they're just reaching out to try to figure out, you know, what can work. Um, and that gives companies like White Wave, you know, a great opportunity to be able to help them understand there are certain things taking place in retail that are beginning to transition over into the C-Store. So consumers are looking for a little bit of ubiquity across every channel that they go to, regardless of what the food is that they're consuming. And in our world, you know, we have a great leadership position with Silk being the number one plant-based beverage brand and the Almond platform being the number one uh, platform within the category in retail. And then helping the convenience store be able to understand like, hey, this is something consumers are looking for. And if you provide this to them uh, in an open air cooler or in your vault, um, you're actually going to be reaching consumers in a way that they are, it's a little bit un unexpected for them in that environment. And it's something that they're excited about and looking for. So I think there's a lot of things that manufacturers can do who are especially uh, adapted to the, the non-dairy space. that can help them understand how can they build kind of that cooler door vault to be able to have greater ubiquity, um, but it also will provide them greater profitability from an operator perspective. Uh, what's becoming pretty popular uh, with these types of brands, um, open air coolers. They're really starting to focus on that, not just with beverages, um, food, and expansion into food service. Uh, they're really going high-end products and really paying attention to their ingredients. But open-air coolers are used for the beverages. They're also used for testing for products, uh, high-end products, before they go into the cooler door sets. Um, so they're becoming pretty popular. You've got yogurts in there. You've got salads, fresh fruits. They're delivered every day in a lot of cases um, through their distributors and wholesalers. Um, so it's really made a, a big impact on the store. It also gives a lot of brands in the C stores opportunities to um, do extra promotions that are ex aside from the mainstream cooler promotions to really uh, get secondary positions. So the brands, suppliers uh, are really interested in those because they get the secondary uh, locations within the store. And anytime you can do that, whether it's on a rack, which are difficult to do in C stores, um, but with the open air coolers, that makes that a possibility. So it's, uh, it's, it, it's working out pretty well for helping uh, even fledgling brands be tested for their main, main cooler doors.